St. Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai. Call Halayim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Barakah Kodash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Barakah Hakodash means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, on the way we worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to our apostles and elders of great millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, all in charity. So, Brother Mathathi from the Great Millstone Camp, the branch on Des Moines. <clears throat> and you can see the title of the lesson is entitled "Be Ready So That We Don't Have to That," you know, or something along those lines. I might, I might tweak the title, you know, by the end of this lesson or something. But that's pretty much what the topic is. You know, when we we started here in the Book of Luke. Chapter 12, verse 35, and read it again. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. Now it says your loins be girded about. Now, when we go into what it means to gird one's loins. If you gird your loins, you prepare to do something difficult or dangerous, right? You know, when you go into the images, when you gird your loins. So in today's time, right, this pretty much means we're tightening our belt. You see? You see the ancient garment, how he will pull it up and he will tighten it up. So in today's in today's time is we're tightening our belt, you know? And Tells us here in the book of Ephesians 6. And for 14, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, you see. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, so our loins is girt about with truth. So we're tightening our belt. We're tightening, right? The word around us, man. Let's see what this says in a... Uh, in the NLT. What was that? Um, Ephesians 6 and 14, was it? I need to get fancy and uh, <laughs> had that, had that, uh, that dual thing going on where it's right there on the side. And I ain't got to, you know, do all this. Look, see? NIV. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place. NLT, stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of the Most High's righteousness, man. So it's making sure that we're equipped, right? If we're going into battle, we want to make sure that, that, that we have the full armor as that Ephesians goes into. Verse 15. And your feet shod, right, meaning our, our shoes tied in today's time, with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the most high. So saying that we should be equipped, right? And reading this um, makes me think of uh, the parable that Yahweh gave about that guy that came in without a wedding garment, man. He wasn't ready for the wedding. You see, there's a proper um, covering that we're supposed to have through the spirit. This is the book of Isaiah 30. And one, woe to the rebellious children, saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin unto sin. Because we're supposed to be putting on our wedding garments, man. This is the book of Isaiah why was I thinking 50? It's Isaiah 52 and 1. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. So our beautiful garments is this knowledge. It's the word of truth. You see? The belt, the helmet, the breastplate. Our, our feet shot, you mean in our shoes are tied, right? And just to prove, you know, what the garment is, 
Because it says, let have our loins girt about as we started off in that Luke 12. Just to prove what the uh what the garment is. This is the book, the book of Sirach. The book. This is the book of Sirach 6 and 22. For wisdom is according to her name, and she is not manifest unto many. So now we know the subject matter here is talking about wisdom. We're gonna jump down. Verse 29. Then shall her fetters be a strong defense for thee, and her chains a robe of glory. You see? For there is a golden ornament upon her, and her bands are purple lace. Thou shalt put her on as a robe of honor, and shalt put her about thee as a crown of joy. So this is the uh, uh, our beautiful garments. This is the wedding garment that we're supposed to have on, man. The truth that's being spoken directly and correctly, and that's been applied directly and correctly. Because it ain't just about speaking it, it's about living it. Be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves as it is written right let's get this one then we could jump back job 29 and 14 i put on righteousness and it clothed me you see and my judgment was as a robe and a diadem going back to that ephesians it talked about the righteousness which is of the most high the breastplate of righteousness you see you know so we're putting on righteousness with faith Faith coming by hearing and hearing by what? The word, you see? So it's the word, it's the proper doctrine that's clothed in us. So this is what we're girt about with, you see? So let's go back, Luke 12 and 35. Let your loins be girded about, you see, with truth, with understanding, and your lights burning. Now what does these lights represent? Let's get Matthew the 25th chapter. Because that light goes into our lamp. Let have our loins girthed about and our lamps burning. This is what Yahweh is telling us. It's Matthew 25. Let's start at one. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish, right? Now these lamps, as you can see, it says a torch, a lamp, the flame of which is fed with oil. And the lamps represent this word because you got... The wise who have this word, but you also have the foolish who have this word. This is the book of Psalms 119 and 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So in this parable here, these lamps represent the word. You see? Just keep in mind, they're all virgins. <laughs> right? But let's keep going. Because it speaks about how the Lord have espoused us to the one husband. That he may present us as a chaste version unto our Lord Yahweh Shai. You know? So within this parable, you have the foolish virgins, right? Which you go into this word foolish, godless, heedless. And that's the key thing right there, heedless. And we're going to show, we're going to show forth that. Matthew 25 and 2, and five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps. They had the word and took no oil with them. Now, when you look up that word foolish, it said what? Heedless. Right? And let's 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 just do a simple Google search of this word heedless. Let's see what it says. Showing a reckless lack of care or attention, unmindful of, taking no notice of, paying no heed to, disregardful of, regardless of, unheeding, neglectful, so, so forth and so on, as you can see, right? And what are they heedless to? Because it said that they had the word, they had the lamp. As it is written, some shall say, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, did we not prophesy in thy name? Did we not cast out devils in thy name? And the Lord going to say, I have not known thee, which is in the same parable. Right? When we read down verse 11, in the Lord, verse 11 and verse 12, the Lord is going to make that statement and say he don't know them, man. You know? So you got guys who who, who call on the name of Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Wah, Yahweh Shah. You got guys who are out there teaching. They're telling you to, to stay away from the pork, the shrimp, the lobster, the crab. Come back to the living power. They're telling you these things. 
But what makes them foolish? Verse three again, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Now, what is the oil? We're going to see why they're heedless. This is the book of Psalms 141. And five, it says, let the righteous smite me. And that's talking about reprove. Because it says how the Lord hewed them by the mouth of his prophets. This is the book of Hosea 6 and 5. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And thy judgment are as the light that goeth forth. Right? So the righteous are the prophets. And they're smiting. They're smiting in the form of what? Giving you this word. You see? It says, uh, they that go about the city. Smoke me. Let's get that. This is the book of Song of Solomon. I believe it's the eighth chapter. Five. This is the book of Song of Solomon, five and seven. The watchman in Ezekiel three says, I have set thee as a watchman, right? Unto the house of Israel, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning for me, roughly paraphrasing. So the watchmen are the prophets. You see? It says, the watchmen that went about the city found me they smote me. They wounded me. I have hewn them by the, by the mouth of my prophets. The keepers of the wall, right? O tower of the flock. Those who are standing upon their watch, their keepers of the wall, took away my veil from me. You see? Which is why Yahweh Shah said what? If I, if I had not come, let's get that because I know I'm going to butcher it. John 15 and 22, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. So that's what happened, right? In that song of Solomon, the watchman spoke, they smote him. They smote him with the words, Hebrew 4 and 12, the word of the most high is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. This is how the Lord is hewing the people, right? So the prophets are coming to speak. And they're taking away that veil. They're taking away that cloak. So there's no longer an excuse. So going back to Psalms 141 and 5. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. Which shall not break my head. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities man. Point being is that what? It shall be an excellent oil. It's that reproof. It's the understanding. Which they were heedless to. Because the correction is continually going out. It tells us here in the book of um, 2 Timothy 3 and 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of the Most High may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You see that? So these guys are heedless unto the correction that's being given. That's why you got God saying that you can have sex on the Lord's Sabbath. You got God saying that uh, you can call him whatever he want. We don't know the names. We'll get him in the kingdom of heaven. The names haven't been revealed unto us. All, all matter of madness that these guys are saying, man. Which they represent the foolish versions, you see. That has no oil. They got the book. They got the lamp. See, the lamp is this book. But the oil is the understanding. It's the correction that comes with it. That they're heedless to, you see? And we ought not to be like that. We are supposed to be ready. Verse 4. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. <laughs> you see? So that's the correction. That's the understanding. Verse 5. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So we were all in our in our course. See, because those that believed in Yahweh Shah back then, over process of time, what happened? They died or was reincarnated. As it is written in the book of Daniel, it says what? That he shall sleep with his fathers. Let's get that. Daniel 12 and 13. But go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest, thou shalt sleep. You see, when our forefathers died, what did it say that they do or that they did? 
said for Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. Second Samuel 7, which was said to uh, our king, King David. When thy day shall be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. <laughs> you see? Shall sleep with his fathers. So it means, you know, this is a good one. Acts 13 and 36. For David, after he had served his own generation by the, the will of the Most High, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. So meaning he died, man. He died and was reincarnated back into his lot as it is written here in Daniel. So this is the same thing that happened. That's uh, taking place in this parable here in Matthew 25 and 5. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And we all heard this cry. Isaiah 58 and 1. The prophets were out there crying aloud, sparing not. And that's what stirred our pure minds by way of remem remembrance. That's what activated the Holy Spirit or the fear of the Lord that was in us, man. Because it says in Sirach that the fear of the Lord is created with the faithful in the womb. So all it took was for us to hear this word for that to be activated. That's what educate means. It means to draw from within. You see? So we uh, 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 awoke out of our sleep, out of our slumber. Out of that, uh, 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 um, that confusion, out of that dead estate. Right? So it says... And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. So now when you go into the meaning, or matter of fact, let me just do it like this. It says they're trimmed their lamps. Now when you go into this Greek word for trim, it's the Greek word cosmeo, which means to put in order, arrange, make ready, prepare, to ornament. To adore, metaphorically, to embellish with honor, gain honor. Now, go to the Strong's definition. It says to put in proper order. That is, decorate. Specifically, to snuff a wick. So, I'm like, huh, to snuff, right? What does that mean, to snuff? So, when you go into trimming lamps, And to lock it up, um, my phone is slow as hell. Oh, man. Bro, what's up? What's up? So now, let's go to this one. So as you can see. It says a lamp is trimmed when the wick is turned either up or down to regulate the amount of flame. If a lamp is empty of oil, it does not matter how much one trims it. The lamp will go out when the oil is consumed. And we read that's, you know, those foolish versions were asking for the oil because their lamps went out. Right. It goes into a lamp trimmer. It says a lamp trimmer was a specialist position on board. Uh, right. I'm gonna just click this. Now, this is going into, you know, a certain occupation, you know, that was done. Uh, as it says, a special position on a boat, I'm sorry, on board ships that involve maintaining oil lamps, right? Because that's how the, the ships were uh, lit during the night. You had certain individuals whose job was to keep those lamps lit, you know, and there were, I'm, I'm using this to apply to today of us keeping our lamps lit. It says, in the days when light came from burning oil and lamps, a vessel at sea needed crewmen to constantly care for the lamps. This care involved trimming the wick, which drew the oil up from the storage reservoir so that the flame would be clean and bright. Lamp trimmers also refilled the reservoirs, which held enough oil for several hours of burning, but not enough to start blah, 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 blah. It says, um... I felt the, the, this this part was heavy to me. The position of lamp trimmers was so entrenched into marine tradition that electricians were called lamp trimmers for years after oil lamps had been completely replaced. So, brothers, <laughs> who are electricians, man? <laughs> You're, uh, you know, the ancient the ancient um, uh, occupation was a, a lamp trimmer, man. That's heavy. You know, you have certain brothers that are that are electricians, right? 
But it says the skill part of being a lamp trimmer was the ability to trim a wick in such a way that it would burn evenly without hot spots so that it would not need attention again for some time. A poorly trimmed wick creates a flame which is dim and smoky. A properly trimmed wick should come to a rounded point or should be wedge shaped. Then it's temperate in all things, right? Balanced to be rounded. You see, when lit, the wick should burn cleanly all the way up to the highest flame it can make. The flame should be at least the width of the wick and even not ragged. And that goes into temperate because that's what spiritually trimming the wick represents, man. You when you trim the wick, right? You would cut off the excess parts of the wick that's not needed so that what? So that it can burn brighter. Now, we read the definition at the bottom. It said what? Specifically to snuff. So the spirit had me look up a candle snuffer. So it says a candle snuffer, a candle extinguisher or dota is an instrument used to extinguish burning candles consisting of a small cone at the end of a handle. The use of a snuffer helps to avoid problems associated with blowing hot wax and avoids the smoke and odor of a smolting wick, which results from simply blowing a candle out. Extinguishers are still commonly used in homes and churches. Right. So as you can see, that's the um, the image of a uh, of a candle snuffer. Now, let's go to the historical usage. A candle wick trimmer, also sometimes called a snuffer before the mid. 19th century, the term snuffer referred to a scissors like device with two flat blades and an attached snuffer box. This tool was used to trim the wick of a candle without extinguishing the flame. And this is what it means in the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter. See, the flame of the wise did not go out, man. They were able to trim their wick while the flame was still burning. You see? So that means that they were able to still focus on the word and cut off the excess parts of their life, man. Just like circumcision. See, physical circumcision, you will what? You will cut off the foreskin or the excess skin off of your private member. Well, how do we do that in the spirit? It says circumcise the foreskin of our hearts, meaning the excess flesh what it says in Colossians, the third chapter, it says, mortify, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth, uncleanness and ordinate affection, concupiscence, you know, so forth and so on. man. It tells us in Galatians that we should walk in the spirit so that we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And then it goes into and explain the, the works of the flesh. You see, and those are the things that we're supposed to be cutting off. We're putting things in proper order, going back to that definition. It says to arrange, to put things in order. You see? And this is what Yahweh Shah told us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to this Matthew 25, but I'm going to jump back to this Luke 12 and 35 that we started with. And I'm going to... Verse 34. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. You see? So Yahweh Shah was giving us a perspective, man. This word comes first. This is our treasure. This is where our mind is. This is where our heart is. You see that? So going back, it says this tool was used to trim the wick of a candle without extinguishing the flame to maintain efficient burning. A small receptacle catches the trim bit of wick. They were rendered obsolete by the invention of self-snuffing wicks. Okay, but you know, that's the point though. To maintain efficient burning. And this is what's taking place here in Matthew, the 25th chapter. So now let's go back to it. Matthew 25 and 7. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the it says buy the truth and sell it not. So then they went and got serious, man. See, that's why the scripture says. This Proverbs 1. Man, I think it's one in Hosea, 
actually. In their affliction, they shall seek me early. But I'll just read this one. Verse 27, it says, when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall ye call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Now, when you go into this word early, it says to seek early or earnestly, look early or diligently for. So these individuals are going to try to be diligent, but it's going to be too late. You see, we're given diligence to make our call and election sure now. We're seeking the Lord while he may be found right now. But these foolish versions, they're going to try to get diligent and it's going to be too late. We can't be like them, man. You see? So going back, Matthew 10, Matthew 25 and 10, this is what we're seeing. They trying to be diligent now, man. But it's too late. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, Yahawashah, Yahawashah, open to us. But he answered and said, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore for ye, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh, man. So going back to the loop, let's go back to loop. 12, 35, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning, right? And once again, our lights burning represent what? It says, whom ye shine as lights in the world, man. It says how we're the children of the day. We're not children of the night. It says, let your light so shine before men. So this light got to continually be burning, man. It speaks about how in the book of Jeremiah, how the word of the Lord was like a fire shut up in, the, in, 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 in Jeremiah bones. Well, we got to ask you, how about Sham Yahweh for that same zeal, uh, uh, zeal, you know, verse 36. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Just like the parable. They were they, they, once they, 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 they went in as soon as, the, you know, it was ready. They went in. So as soon as Yahweh Shah come, man, we can be ready for his coming. Verse 37, blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily, I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them and find them so blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be therefore ready also for the son of man cometh at an hour when ye think not. So it tells us, man, we got to be found watching as it tells us here in the book of Habakkuk. This is Habakkuk chapter two. In verse one, it says, I will stand upon my watch. That's the keepers of the wall that we read in Song of Solomon, right? And set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Right. It's like here. This is the book of Isaiah 21 and six. For thus saith the Lord. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, go set a watchman, let him declare what he seeth. And this is exactly what we doing. According to Ezekiel three and 17, the Lord has set us set us up as watchmen. So that we can hear the word of his mouth and give the people warning from the Lord, man. Second Andrews 15. It says that the Lord has put his words in our mouth, right? Let's get that. <clears throat> Second Edges 15 and 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. And this is exactly what we're doing. We're reading the prophecies in according to verse 2, back in Habakkuk 2 and 2. And Yahweh Basham Yahweh shall answer me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. So we're so we're getting a vision from the scriptures. We see the vision from the scriptures. And we're standing upon our watch, looking at uh, um uh, uh what's going on throughout the world, and we're able to filter it through the whole through the scriptures, through the understanding that's given. So that we can let our people know the time that we're living in. 
Verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So the Lord is speaking to us through the scriptures, man. That's why it says in the book of Hebrews, this Hebrews 1 and 1, the Most High who has sundry times and in a diverse manner spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed of all things, by whom also he made the world. So he's speaking to us through Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai is speaking through his prophets. You see? Those same prophets that the Father, that the Heavenly Father spoke through in times past, they're back today speaking in the name of Yahweh Shai. You see? It says, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. And he comes in a volume of the book. The word was made flesh. So the prophets would be able to interpret the Bible, man. Because the Bible is our Lord, Yahweh Shai. And this is how the Lord is speaking through us. Just like in the ancient world. You had the Urim and Thummim. You have the Urim and Thummim. Numbers 27, 21. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of Urim. Before Yahweh at his word shall they go out and at his word they shall come in both he and all the children of Israel with him and all the congregation. But the Urim and Thummim, which Urim is Awarium, which means lights. Let your lights <laughs> stay burning. And Thummim is Thamayim which is perfection. See, this word is light and perfection. This word, Isaiah 8 and 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. This word is the light. You see? In perfection, it says in the Psalms, what's that, the 11th chapter, that this word is purified seven times. It's perfect. Light and perfection. And this is how the Lord speaks uh, uh, to us, man. Because this book is our human thumbum today. That's why it tells us here in the book of Sirach. This is um Sirach 33 and 3. A man of understanding trusted in the law and the law is faithful unto him as an oracle. Now, when you look at this in my book, in my King James, the same Sirach 33, right? So you can see this. As you can see there, as an oracle, you see it right there? And on the side right here, it says, or the asking of Urim. <laughs> you see? So the, this book is our Urim and Thummim. It's the lights and perfection from where we we uh, seek Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, just like David. David inquired at the Urim and Thummim. You see? And who would hold the Urim and Thummim? The priest. That's why in the book of Revelation, the 14th chapter says only the 144,000 could understand it. See, this book is really just for the priest, man. And in turn, those who take heed to the words of the priest, you know, they will be delivered, you know, as it says, man, uh, you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, so receive a prophet's reward. That's salvation. You see? But it's the prophets, according to Nehemiah 8, it's the prophets, it's the priests who what? Who cause the people to understand the writing, make it plain upon tables. Just like in the ancient world, they would go to the prophet or they would go to the priest in order to what? To inquire of the Lord. And there were certain men within our uh, um, within our history who were priests and prophets. You had Zadok, right? Which he was the high priest. He was also a seer, as David called him. Our king, King David himself, he was a prophet, as it calls him in Acts. But also he was a priest. He wore an ephod which was unlawful for anyone outside of the uh, the children of Aaron to wear. 
But then you got a nigga that say you need a you need a we gonna need a Levitical man. You know. But the point being, this is our urim and thummim. This is our light. This is uh, 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 what we're supposed to um, be attentive to. This is how we're prepared. It's by doing what? First Timothy 4. And 13, till I come give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. This is how we keep our loins girded. And our lights burning is by being in tune with the spirit. Making sure we're, uh, um, you know, uh, man, what the hell do El Yashawamba title is? Uh, current events. You know, we're in tune with current events. You know, we know what's going on in the world. We know what's going on through, the, you know, the times that we living in. These people are waxing worse and worse, man. <laughs> you know? And it says at the end, they shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, the doctrine of devils. It says that uh, in the end, men shall be uh, bolsters, liars, blasphemers, you know, disobedient to parents, haters of good works, roughly paraphrasing, man. And this is what we're seeing. This is a, 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 um, a anti-Messiah uh, society, man, at its highest, man, you know. So those are also signs that our Lord is on his way. Not only to mention, you know, the uproars of the people, you know, the um, the wars and rumors of wars, the the earthquakes in diverse places, man. You know, the fires, <laughs> right? As it says in Isaiah 29, the Lord will visit with, with, with tempest and with the flame of devouring fire. Roughly paraphrasing, man. You know? So this is how we're ready. This is how we stay ready. You know, so Lord will, I hope this is out of fine. I'm going to end it there. Thawad Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Baruch HaKodash, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who preach in the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. And because the spirit had me look down, I'm going to read this last verse and close it out. 1 Timothy 4 and 14, neglect not the gift that is in thee. That's what those foolish versions did. That's what those foolish versions did. We cannot be that. Which was given thee by prophecy with the land on of the hands of the presbytery. When you go into this word neglect, to be careless of, you see, to make light of, to be negligent, not regard, to be heedless. So may Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah keep his Holy Spirit upon us. May his word continue to burn in us, you know, and um, keep that zeal within us, man. Shalom.